You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. We present The Business Plan by John Fryer. With Robin Ingram and Duncan Smith. Did you know about this? Good morning, Jim. You're back early. It's a pleasure to see you as always. How was your holiday? The holiday was wonderful. Because it can't all be work, 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 you know. Where did you go again? Two weeks in New York, as I know you know very well. Ah, yes. Did you bring me back a small Statue of Liberty? I'd very much like one to put in my mantelpiece at home. (laughs) Anyway, welcome back. What do you think of the weather? It's a fine day, don't you think? Is it a fine day? Not from what I've just heard, it isn't. I have something for you here, an envelope, something that I wanted to explain. I did think about having it sent out to you, but, uh, well... I've got something for you, actually. Oh, yes? An envelope of my own. Really? Something to talk to you about. This should be interesting. Step into my office. Oh, you're already here. It'll wait. You want to tell me... When was all this decided? Because this has to have gone through you. Human resources would never do this without speaking to you. There have been some changes while you were away. Some quite dramatic, I'm afraid. Normally, I would have preferred to discuss these things over with you. Uh, But in this case, there didn't seem to be the time. Have you heard about Jennings? (laughs) Got caught doing something he shouldn't have again. This is serious. I can see that. Ted Jennings has worked in this firm for decades. There's only you and me that have been here longer. I remember when he joined, I interviewed him in that leaky office on Catherine Street, an office converted shoebox more like. We had nothing. I was standing because we had no chairs, if you recall, in a suit I'd bought the previous day from a charity shop. I wasn't sure in truth if it was me interviewing him or him seeing if we were worth joining. After all, it wasn't as if we had any money, was it? We had dreams, Dan. That was all we had. That was all we could afford. Ted Jennings came on board when many others turned us down. Turned us down, I say. Told us where to go and what to do when we got there is more like it. Ted joined us when almost everyone else closed the door in our faces. You may have forgotten, but I remember only too clearly the numerous people that slammed the phone down on us, on me, actually, when I told them what we could pay. Ted Jennings said yes. You know why? Because he dared to believe in us. The mad young men that had a dream of a brighter tomorrow and making the world a better place. And let's be honest, Dan. It wasn't because we had deep pockets, because our pockets had plenty of holes in them. And in those early years, some days we even had to ask if Ted would take his money the following week. But he never complained. Never said no. Never made a fuss. He just got on with the work, did whatever needed doing. He could have left, could have told us where to get off. He had his reasons, no one could have blamed him, but he didn't. He was loyal. Do you understand that? Understand what that means? Because loyalty has to mean something. He supported us, backed us, when no one else would. At one point he was the only friend we had, and now this. You must have known about this. How did you think this would be seen? What did you think would be the reaction? How do you think the union will take this? Ted Jennings has worked for us for 40 years, and today we just sacked him. It's terrible, I know. You know? HR has been talking about whole departments for several months now. Talking about it, yes, but this is actually doing it. At some point, it was likely to happen. HR talks about redundancy all the time. It's what human resources departments do. It's their job. Wholesale culls so they can start recruiting again is their thing, their dream. 
And like most dreams, they're fine so long as they remain between their ears. Because the moment these things become reality, people get hurt. I really do understand how you feel. Have you seen the lists of those that have been given the boot today? People we have known for years, decades in some cases. They were like family. This firm was a family. I believed we weren't just some money-grubbing corporation. Heaven knows there are no shortage of those around. But we, I thought, were always different. I, I travelled on the bus for years, as I'm sure you remember, and sitting amongst the people of this town, I frequently heard men and women say to each other, if you can get a job with that company, then you'll be all right. That's a good company. That's the one to join if you get the chance. I wonder what they say about us now. We are in a very competitive world just now, Jim. It is unfortunate, but these problems do occur, have occurred, and the appropriate action has been taken. By throwing people onto the scrap heap. The firm will do all it can to help those affected to gain worthwhile employment. Where? Around here? I exactly what will that entail? Six months of state benefits and then some government work programme? We're not the first company to flood the local economy with qualified personnel. How many street cleaners do the outsourced council companies need this year? Maybe Ted could apply for a position tidying up the high street. Ted is a talented man. I I I'm sure he will have little difficulty in acquiring a suitable position. You're sure of that, are you? Uh, he is a... Very capable man. He's 61, Dan. Who is going to offer him a position at his time of life? No suggestions? I know that days like today are rough. Rough? Let me finish. These sorts of days are by definition difficult. It's never easy to say goodbye to people, especially people you might have known for many years. But sometimes... With patience and consideration, you'll come to realise that this was the right decision. You might even come to say it was the only real thing we could do for the good of the company. The good of the company? In the long term. To sack hundreds of people? It's a bleak day, a terribly sad day. To throw people out onto the dole queue. But these days, they do pass. People that have been loyal to this firm, to us... And the best thing we can do is to continue with our work and wish those that have left us today the best for the future. Did you get that out of a book? Industry is not an emotional business. In the current economic climate, changes had to be made. Costs have risen, and the backers want to know that we are as lean as we can be. No more dead weight. The fat has to be removed from the bone. It's hard, and it makes people upset. Tough luck. We are in the business of making a profit. We are not a social welfare institution. It's about people, Dan. We asked people to trust us. Come in and create a life for yourself and do it here. We said, I said, that we are worth putting your faith in. As I said, when we started this, we had nothing, just some ideas and ambition, and we brought people in on the strength of that ambition. They gave us portions of their lives. We've just thrown thousands of them onto the streets. Why? The firm's made a profit this year. Uh, maybe not as much as last year, I agree, but it's hardly the end of the world. The wolf is nowhere near the door, and yet today we're attacking the very people that made us the money in the first place. So when you say this is not a social institution... The profits are not as strong as expected. When are they ever? No. I mean, the expectation was the results would be higher. Far higher than we announced recently. The response in the city, the share price, took a knock... Have you seen the screens today? I just got in. I heard about the redundancies and I came straight here. The share price is down almost a quarter. We've lost millions in the last 12 hours. The boys and girls in the square mile are dumping us like there's no tomorrow. And if we don't get ahead of this, there won't be. But when? Well, it started about four days ago. Thursday? Movement in the exchange, you know what it's like. Prices fluctuate a little up and down all the time, sir. Some days it smiles, some days it frowns, it's just the markets. What happened? Oil up, gas up, water for all I know. 
The market is an uncontrollable beast at the best of times. I did try to call you. It was my first holiday in two years. You told me to take a holiday. You're looking a bit tired, a bit peaky, you said. You advised me to take a well-deserved break. You said everything was in safe hands. As safe as can be expected is what I actually said. So I agreed. Look at the timing. No one can control these things. Evidently. The markets are jittery at the moment. They see the way commodity prices are going. It makes people nervous. When it comes to money, people are always nervous, especially money they know they haven't earned. I've heard that before. They always react before they think it's the nature of markets. Yes. Well, you were away. Well, I said I would be turning off my phone. You could have left a message with the hotel. Say what? The shares are in freefall. Please ring home. You wouldn't have had to put it like that. Anyway, I did call. I didn't get the message. Stay in Manhattan next time, not New York State. Can we buy the shares back? There are too many of them. We thought at first it was simply a takeover. Rival firm after our shelf space. The share price was high. Yes, it was. For the last six months, our share price has slowly risen a little day by day. It was a trend we all hoped would continue. Sad to say, it hasn't. Have you seen the financial pages this morning? I said, I've just come straight here. I flicked through them. Then you'll know. The analysts have been marking us down due to the last quarter's results. The last quarter's results? A profit warning was announced. The city knew They that... knew, and they prepared. Those nice people in the square mile decided to look at us in great detail. They've decided that the last quarter's results are the beginning of something we might not be able to stop. Meaning? Declining sales. Inflation is on the way up, projected to rise for the foreseeable future. Consumer spending will, can, only fall. Rule of the market, law of the jungle. And we can't buy them back? The shares? No. Even with the slippage in price, we simply don't have the capital. Where did all the money go? A number of places. Well, such as? We didn't dump the pension scheme when we should have. Some investments that haven't worked out. We probably didn't really need the corporate jets, now that I think about it. Oh, the fleet of company cars. And we only bought the R&D plant because, before the flotation, we were told it will inspire confidence within the city. How much confidence do we inspire now? Clearly not that much. So we sold shares in the business to raise money, invest in research and development, to please the very people that are now killing us by the second. That's about it. And, and so, to send out the right signals, you issued redundancies. If this business is to survive the next 24 hours, we must be seen to take the initiative. We've got to get ahead of the markets. Positive headlines in the pink pages. The city must read that the board has a plan to turn this company around. Turn the company around? Yes. But the economy is stagnating at the moment. You don't have to be clever to know that. It's been on the TV. Our losses are nothing compared with what's going on out there in the high street. It was never the business that was the problem. Yes, the sales were down 2.5% across the whole firm. It only became a trend because someone decided to sell their shares on the back of it. Well, that's the world we live in, Jim. And that's the world we embraced when we went down this line. I told you then, if you remember, that it was dangerous. Oh, hey, now, don't try and lay this on me. It, it was your idea to float the company. We needed the money. Where else did you think it was going to come from? Some rich relative? Or a win on the horses? We needed to expand. Any business that doesn't will, can, only contract. There was never any other way forward. The level of capital required meant we had to go looking for outside sources. The investors could see we were a winner and put their money into us. They, they didn't put their hands in their pockets because we appeared to be on the side of the angels. They thought we were a secure investment plan, and we were. The opening returns were staggering. Prices up a full 6% on the first quarter's trading. We were the safest place to put your money. But as I said then, shareholders are by definition short-term. No one invests with a view to keeping us in their portfolio for long these days, and with high-frequency trading, people buy and sell us in the blink of an eye. But they hold on to us because of the derivatives. And as the share price falls, so will the payout. Which will mean that more shares will be sold faster and faster. We haven't been the only players in the marketplace to suffer setbacks. 
These cycles in the business world happen all the time. I, we've all seen recessions come and go. It's not the first time, and I'm sure we'll see such events again.